So far in this course, we have looked at ways to make as much of your organization's data available to as many people as possible, in ways that makes it easy for them to access and discover the information that is relevant to them. As we all know, though, in some cases you do not want certain people to see sensitive data that is not appropriate for them, and often you will want to restrict and simplify the data available to users so that they are not overwhelmed by the amount of information available. To do this, we need to have a way to control which information is available to users and groups within the organization for security and private reasons, privacy reasons, and to prevent users from spending a lot of time searching through irrelevant data and subject areas. In addition, users do not want to have to remember many individual usernames and passwords to access their systems and instead ideally we prefer to have a single logon that accesses their business intelligence dashboards as well as their general line of business applications. This means that as an Oracle business intelligence developer you typically will need to connect your business intelligence infrastructure to a corporate directory server so that the usernames and passwords used to access dashboards are the same as those used to access desktops and business applications. In this part of the lesson, we will look at two main areas concerning security. First, we will look at what most end users think of it in terms of security, which is controlling access to subject areas and the data items within their business intelligence data set. To do this, we also look at variables, something touched on earlier on, and uh, a discussion of presentation variable to pass values from prompts to analysis and dashboards. In this case, they are created in the repository and are typically used for section-based security. Then we look at the more complex topics of the Oracle Business Intelligence Security Infrastructure. How to create application roles and apply them within the repository and catalog, and how to connect to external directory servers such as Microsoft Active Directory. In module 5 of this course where we discuss security, we have a number of lessons that will be presented to you in this order. In lesson 39, we we'll talk about an overview of Oracle Business Intelligence Security. Then in lesson 40, we we'll talk about configuring raw level security. 41, configuring subject area catalog and functional area security. Lesson 42, Oracle Platform Security Services. Lesson 43, Application Roles and Policies and how security applies to those two. Lesson 44, Understanding Oracle Business Intelligence Security Infrastructure. Lesson 45, The Default Security Profile. And Lesson 46, Managing Application Roles and Policies. Note that this is not a comprehensive list of all uh, security uh, components and uh, the different uh, segments of uh, the Oracle Business Intelligence Security Infrastructure. This is just chosen specifically because an understanding of all this area simplifies understanding overall security in Oracle Business Intelligence as you do further studies on your own. So let's get started. In lesson 39, we we'll talk about an overview of Oracle Business Intelligence Security. Oracle Business Intelligence 11G is tightly integrated with the Oracle Fusion Middleware Security Architecture and delegates core security functionality to components of that architecture. Specifically, any Oracle Business Intelligence installation makes use of the following types of security providers. An authentication provider that shows how to access information about the users and groups accessible to Oracle Business Intelligence and is responsible for authenticating users. A policy store provider that provides access to application roles and application policies, which forms a core part of the security policy and determines what users can and cannot see and do in Oracle Business Intelligence. A credential store provider that is responsible for storing and providing access to credentials required by Oracle Business Intelligence. 
Security within the context of Oracle Business Intelligence normally comprises four functional areas. Creating low-level data filters, which are applied to data in the background to restrict the scope of data that users see in an analysis or report. Controlling access to columns, tables, entire subject areas within the repository. Restrictions and controls over which parts of the application you can access. For example, whether a user has the ability to create or edit analysis. Controlling who has access to which reports, dashboards, and other BI objects within your system. Lesson 14. Configuring low-level security. Apart from ensuring that all users have their own logon and password, the first aspect of security that most organizations wish to put in play for their business intelligence systems is usually the raw level security, in which groups of users have access to shared reports, but each group sees different data and in totals in each report depending on its area of responsibility. The raw level security can be added by the author of a report or an analysis when creating it by adding additional filters to the report that restrict the data shown based on a user's group membership. Ideally, this raw level filtering of data occurs automatically and in the background so that writers can write general purpose reports that are automatically filtered according to end, user, end users' areas of responsibility. Raw level security can be set up in Oracle Business Intelligence in two main ways. You can define filters that are applied to users or roles in the Oracle Business Intelligence repository, usually based on a repo on repository or session variables values set for users when they log on into the dashboard. You can define raw level security in the source database using a feature such as virtual private database in the Oracle database and configure Oracle Business Intelligence to pass on the user's credentials to the database and ensure that caching becomes private to each user, as the Business Intelligence server will not otherwise know that the database will provide different values, results for different users even if it processes the same query for them. Lesson 41, Configuring Subject Area, Catalog and Functional Area Security. In the previous section of this chapter, we looked at restricting the roles of data that users could see in reports and analysis. But what if you wanted to stop people from seeing entire subject areas or just individual tables or columns within a subject area, or certain catalog objects or folders? What if you wanted to restrict them to using dashboards but not the analysis editor, for example? You have a choice of two different main approaches to restricting access to a particular subject area or to certain tables or columns in a subject area. The first involves restricting access to data at the repository level and the second is at the catalog presentation services level. Lesson 42, Oracle Platform Security Services. Oracle Platform Security Services is part of the Oracle Fusion middleware on which the Oracle Business Intelligence is built and it uses a security abstraction layer called Oracle Platform Services to connect to companies' various authenticators and other security frameworks. Instead of connecting directly to directory servers such as Microsoft Active Directory, it connects via OPSS which has a standard standard interface over this directory through a provider. When the Oracle BI Analytics application that you use to connect to the Oracle BI Presentation Services connects to OPSS, it does so through a set of application programming interfaces that provide access to these services. At a high level, OPSS provides three abstracted services for OBIEE and for their for other Fusion middleware-based applications. Identity Store. By default, this is set to use an embedded WebLogic server, LDAP server, but it can be 
configure to connect to Microsoft Active Directory, for example. Policy Store. This contains details of application roles, application policies, and the permissions they use, which by default are stored in a file called system jazndata.xml, but can be directed, redirected to an LDAP or file-based policy store. Credential Store. This replaces the external one that OBIEE 10G used, which contains the usernames, passwords, and other credentials that system services require. It can be externalized if required. Lesson 43, Application Roles and Policies. Application Roles represents a role a user has when using Oracle Business Intelligence. Is also the container used by Oracle Business Intelligence to grant permissions to members of a role. Application roles are managed in the policy store provider. Application policies. Oracle Business Intelligence permissions are granted by its application roles. In the default security configuration, each role conveys a predefined set of permissions. An application policy is a collection of Java Enterprise Edition and JAAS policies that are applicable to a specific application. The application policy is the mechanism that defines the permissions each application role grants. Permission grants are managed in the application policy corresponding to an application role. Lesson 44. Understanding Oracle Business Intelligence Security Infrastructure. Oracle Business Intelligence authenticates users when they log into the dashboard, authorize them to use aspects of the application, and have a location to administer and store the raw assignments, permissions, and other elements of, the secur of security that are required for an Oracle Business Intelligence domain. Oracle Business Intelligence does this by leveraging the security infrastructure of the Oracle Fusion middleware the platform on which it is built. The Oracle BI server then authenticates users through the security service hosted in the WebLogic server, which uses a feature called Oracle Platform Security Services to connect to embedded and external authenticators and directory services. Lesson 45. The Default Security Profile. When you install and configure your system, you will need a default set of services that you can use immediately so that you can start registering users and allocating them to security groups. To make this possible, Oracle Business Intelligence ships with a default security configuration which gives you a starting point for your system security. Oracle Business Intelligence uses the following default security providers. For authentication and authorization, it stores users and groups in an embedded LDAP server running on the WebLogic server. For storing credentials for use by the BI server, for example, when connecting to the Oracle BI repository, it uses a file-based credential store on the WebLogic server. Similarly, for storing details of the application roles and policies, it uses a file-based policy store, also held on the WebLogic server. Oracle Business Intelligence also ships with, among others, three application roles that you can grant to new and existing users. The BI Consumer. This is a base level role that grants the user access to existing analysis, dashboards, and agents and allows them to run or schedule existing BI publisher reports but not create any new ones. The BI Author. This is a role that is also recursively granted the BI consumer role, which also allows users to create new analysis, dashboards, and other BI objects. The BI administrator. This role is recursively granted the BI author and therefore BI consumer roles, which allows the user to administer all parts of the system, including modifying catalog permissions and privileges. Lesson 46. Managing Application Roles and Policies In a previous lesson, you learned about the default security profile and were introduced to the BI Consumer, BI Author, and BI Administrator roles. In the remaining parts of this lesson, 
I will show you how to create users and groups and how to grant catalog permissions. All this will be achieved through the administrative user web logic. As an administrator though, you are responsible for managing the existing application roles and creating new ones. And in some circumstances, you might need to create and work with application roles. To check this and see how application roles and policies are administered, you will follow the steps demonstrated here in this lesson. You will also be shown how to create and manage application roles, create and manage application policies. Let's get started.